From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good evening, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk about Abacover. Abacover, you know, the inhibitors of retroviruses, the nucleoside inhibitors like azidothiamidin, deoxyanosine, deoxycytidin, stavudin, lamivudin, tenofovir, and uh, now abacavir belongs to the same class. So the abacavir is a nucleoside analog and it is an inhibitor of retroviruses. That's the starting point. So it's a nucleoside analog of guanosine that causes chain termination of DNA synthesis. You know, HIV is an RNA virus. It enters the body and uh, then it uh, causes the termination. I mean, this drug causes the termination of the virus in that uh, aspect. And it's, it's available in combination with uh, other drugs like uh, uh, lamovidin or azidothiabidin or if you give it by itself, I mean the resistance levels are high. It's absorbed well, like 80, 83% of it is absorbed well following oral administration, has a half-life of 1.5 hours. The drug undergoes hepatic glucuronidation and carboxylation. That's an important point, folks. The drug undergoes hepatic glucuronidation and carboxylation. If you remember that point, you can also, um, uh, predict the side effects. One of the side effects of this medication is the uh, increase in the liver enzymes. So Abacavir is mostly co-administered with uh, Lamovidin as once daily or fixed dose combination formulations also available. Now Abacavir, um, when you use it in combination, it has more potency. Just like in tuberculosis, we use that multi-drug uh, formulas to treat tuberculosis. In the same way here also you need to use that. Now I want to tell you a few important points about uh, Abacavir. Very very important. About 8% of patients develop uh, hypersensitivity reactions with Abacavir and the symptoms may range from uh, um, your dyspnea in some patients, fever, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and along with dyspnea, patient may get other problems like pharyngitis, cough, and a rash. So you see the wide range of symptoms can happen in these patients. And laboratory abnormalities are, as I said, increase in the liver enzymes. Remember, when talking about metabolism, we saw that uh, the drug undergoes hepatic glucuronidation and carboxylation. That's why the amino transferases and creatine kinase can go up in patients uh, taking these medications. And these, med these problems will resolve once you stop the pa this medication. And when you restart the medication, the symptoms could be fatal. That's very important. Now let me tell you another important point. You need to test the patients for HLA B5701 allele to prevent the hypersensitivity to this medication. So HLA B5701 allele needs to be tested in all patients taking this medication. And that's a very, very important point because uh, I mean, Abacavir associated hypersensitivity is increasing and there is a growing industry of lawyers who are just uh, going and telling did the doctor test you for HLA B5701 allele. So remember that you need to test the patients for 5701 allele before you start this medication. And as I said, the adverse reactions can be rash, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, dyspnea, fatigue, and pancreatitis and all that stuff can happen. The other important point I want to stress here is that 
you need to be careful when you use this medication in patients with cardiac disease risk factors because this drug has been shown to increase myocardial events like myocardial infarction so this drug need to be used carefully and the other important point is like in patients who are taking methadone this medication abacavir can decrease the dose of i mean in, decrease the level of methadone in the blood resulting in opioid withdrawal so opioid withdrawal is a complication when you use this medication along with methadone because abacavir can decrease the methadone dose so test them for the presence of HLA B5701 allele and be careful in patients with uh, heart disease and then careful like increase the dose of uh, uh, methadone in patients who are uh, uh, going through like uh, opioid dependence like who are on a meth methadone maintenance program that kind of stuff so you see abacavir let's do like a, a few cases like uh, uh, to expand this uh, medication for example you got a patient like 56 years old he's saying that he got a chest pain and the chest pain is moving into his uh, left arm he has a little bit of uh, shortness of breath and uh, you took an EKG and uh, it is showing like a uh, ST segment elevation in anterior leads you suspected a myocardial infarction and the patient's uh, past medical history is significant for hepatitis C, hepatitis B and uh, HIV and the uh, patient says he has been recently started on Abacavir and uh, in this patient who has developed a acute myocardial infarction uh, you need what is the causative factor one of the things you could see right there is abacavir because abacavir has been shown to increase myocardial infarction in patients who are taking it it's just a recent study showed that so that's a, uh, a typical scenario you could be asked about then let us make another uh, case like for example uh, a 21 year old female came to your office and uh, she says that uh, she's having uh, headaches and fatigue and uh, muscle aches and uh, uh, nausea, diarrhea, uh, sleeplessness and you took her vital signs, the blood pressure is uh, 170 by 120 and then uh, the pulse is like 110, temperature 100.7 and and uh, pulse ox like is like 98 percent and the past medical history patient says that uh, uh, she has been on methadone for about a year and uh, her past medical history is significant for uh, diabetes and uh, hiv she has been recently started on uh, uh, abacavir by her uh, infectious disease specialist so you are seeing here what are you seeing here what do you suspect in this patient who has developed all these symptoms non-specific symptoms who has been on methadone for a long time and who has been started on abacavir like a month ago what do you suspect you need to suspect opioid withdrawal because the methadone she is taking that dose has been decreased by this abacavir so abacavir decreases the methadone loss resulting in opioid withdrawal in this patient. That's a typical case here. And um, um, then the other case scenario, a patient like 44 year old male came to you complaining of a severe rash and uh, he has a diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, dyspnea, pharyngitis, bronchitis, sore throat and a little bit of shortness of breath. And past medical history, he has HIV and uh, he's already been on uh, lamovidin and azidothiamidin and his doctor just a week ago started him on abacavir. And uh, what do you suspect in this patient? You suspect uh, abacavir hypersensitivity syndrome in this patient. And if the question says like uh, how you might have prevented this patient from developing this problem 
is and uh, what test you might have done what test you should have done in this case the test should be HLA-B 5701-LL that is the LL that should have been tested in this patient so the patient would not get this medication so those are the typical scenarios uh, I wanted to share with you related to Abacavir. If you have any important points, please feel free to post them on our website. And uh, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.